101 with Mr. Burger. Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to Art 101 with me, Mr. Berger, professional artist and master educator, trying to bring you the best in art historical content and videos. I would tell about you. Now, as always, I appreciate the likes, shares, and new subscribers. And that's a healthy thing to admit. So today's video is going to focus on iconography. The elements of art present content even in a situation where there is no nameable or recognizable subject matters represented. However, when any subject matter is presented, the meaning is often based on traditional interpretations. That's what I thought. Iconography is the symbolic meaning of signs, subjects, and images. Now, not all works of art contain iconography. In those that do, it is often the symbolism rather than the obvious subject matter that carries the deepest level of meanings. Whoa, that was close. The identification and specific significance of subjects, motifs, forms, colors, and so forth are the central concern of iconographic interpretations. It'd be a lot cooler if you did. <laughs> An artist can give information through iconography. Alright, let's check out an example of that. For example, in Jan Van Eyck's wedding portrait, there are many layers of information presented to the viewer that knows how to read the images in the work, or iconography. The shoes on the floor tell us this is a sacred event. The single candle is a reference to their religious beliefs. The man's back to the window and the woman's back to the home tell us their place in the family and the world and so on and so on and so on within the work. <laughs> I didn't know how to break it to you. The work is literally packed with information about this couple. Now an excellent example of Hindu iconography called Descent of the Ganges was carved in a huge granite outcropping in southern India. Included in this composition are more than 100 human figures, deities, angel-like creatures, life-sized elephants, and a huge range of other animals. Each one of these creatures is converging on the Ganges River. This is an elaborate depiction of intertwining Hindu legends, and the composition is filled with symbolic subject matters. The central gorge in the carving symbolizes the descent of the secret Ganges from heaven to earth, making this land fertile. The cobra-like figures in the gorge are like the king and the queen of the Nagas, serpent deities that portray the great river. These figures occupy the center of the relief and other legends are illustrated around them. In front of the largest elephants is a comical depiction of a cat and mice. According to the Hindu tale, a cat pretending to be very holy stood beside the Ganges and paused as it looked to the sun. The cat convinces the mice that it was in fact holy and thus worthy of their worship. As the mice close their eyes in reverence to the cat, it snatches them up for dinner. The whole sculpture relates to an annual miracle of the return of life-giving waters of the river to the creatures around it. Now the real question is, can you think of other examples? I got a beauty. We can literally find forms of iconography all around us in various forms. Now if I do say so myself, those are some pretty great examples of visual art. Now let's look at some musical examples. Linguistically. Music has had these iconography-laden lyrics probably forever. A couple quick examples. Have you heard Hero by the Foo Fighters? Many people might recognize that David Grohl is singing about his friend Kurt Cobain's death. You could find the same subject matter in Immortality by Pearl Jam. They don't really come out and say it directly but they use symbols in the language in order to illustrate the points they're trying to make and pay homage to their lost friend. 
Now, Kurt Cobain obviously was the Nirvana frontman, so let's go to Nirvana, one of my favorites. A lot of times people think of their music as being about nonsense or whatnot, but take a look at a song like Heart Shaped Box. This is a song that's really about life and fighting cancer in order to stay alive. One of my absolute favorite examples of this in music is maybe a little bit odd. Again, maybe not, I don't know. Let's go all the way back to the 1980s. And there was a singer by the name of George Michael who was really trying to change his whole look. He went from this pretty boy in the group Wham! to this bad boy motorcycle guy through this huge image change. The videos with the jukebox, the guitar, the motorcycle jacket, the sunglasses. I mean, the whole bit was a complete switcheroo. And then he came out with another album called Listen Without Prejudice Volume 1. And one of the big song hits that came out of that album was Freedom 90. It was packed with these supermodels singing his songs. The song Freedom was really about destroying the image that he had tried to create. The song is his coming out of the closet anthem. He was finished with the accessories of the bad boy or whatever sort of image that MTV and the record producers were trying to make him around, and he completely threw it out the window with the song. I think it was pure brilliance, and again, one hell of a song. Now obviously, because of laws and rules and regulations, I can't play all of the songs and all that, but check out the related content down in the description, and you'll find the links to those great songs down there and you can feel free to peruse it at your leisure. <laughs> it's a fact, I love that story. The end. <laughs>